Hi everyone, my name is Panindra and I am the admin of Bioscience YouTube channel and in this presentation I am going to explain about a disease called as mucormycosis which is commonly called as black fungus. So in these pandemic situations only we have uh, heard the disease called as mucormycosis which is commonly called as black fungus. So what do you mean by this mucormycosis? Each and everything will be completely detailedly explained in this video. So watch this video till the end. So, Mucormycosis is a fungal infection where in olden days it is called as zygomycosis. So basically, I mean the first list pores will be germinated in your body and once they are germinated it will form a long tubular filaments which will be completely grown in your bloodstream and once your bloodstream will get infected with these tubular filaments then it will start infecting your tissues. So once your tissues are infected in your body then it will lead to disease called as mucormycosis. Right, and spores which will be germinated initially are called as mucormycetes. As you can see in the picture, this is the picture which is released by BCC, and these are mucormycetes. So, in what kind of people generally we can see this, uh, you know, mucormycosis disease? Generally, in people with less ability to fight with infection. I mean, in simple words, we can say that if the person is having less immune power in his body, then we can see the person is can be which can be infected with this disease called as black fungus. Right, and one more important point which you people have to remember is that this black fungus it cannot be transmitted from one person to another person. But in the case of this COVID-19 virus, it can be transformed. You know, it could get it could get it get transferred from one person to another person. Right, but in the case of black fungus, it cannot be transmitted. Coming to the next point, infection usually begins in the mouth or nose and enters the central nervous system via the eyes. So once if the person is infected with this mucormycosis, I mean this black fungus disease then the scene in the pattern can be seen in the part of mouth or as a nose and once it gets spread completely in your body then it will get entered into central nervous system which is present in your brain and this black fungus we have heard it for the first time right but in the year of 1855 itself a scientist called as Friedrich he already described the first case of mucormycosis and then later on later in the year of 1876 another scientist called as Friedringer he firstly described the disease which is caused in the lungs. In the year of 1884, later on later in the year of 1884, another scientist called as Lichtenstein, he established the development of the disease in rabbits, which means he done the experiment on the rabbit uh, in order to uh, prove this disease and he described that not only one, there are two species of this disease, I mean which causes this uh, disease by spores. So these two species he have named it, he have nomenclatured it. So what are those two species? Mucor corymbifera and another species is Mucor rhizopodiformis. Later on, later, Lichtenstein himself named these two species with another names, which are common names. Like for the species of Mucor corymbifera, he named it as Lichtenia. As the name of the scientist is Lichtenstein, he named that disease, I mean that species, as Lichtenia. And coming to the another species, which is Mucor rhizopas, rhizopas. So now coming to the uh, common symptoms which can be seen in the particular a person who is infected with this a black fungus disease. One of the symptoms is one-sided swelling of the face. And coming to the next symptom, uh, it is a common symptom which is headache. Now coming to the another symptom, so this is one of the most important symptoms which you people have to remember is that which I have previously said you in the introduction part itself where you are going to see uh, the first symptom in the regions of mouth as well as the nose. So there is a presence of black lesions which will be formed only in the upper inside region of the mouth. Then we can assume that the patient or the particular person is infected with the disease called as black fungus or mucormycosis, right? And another common symptom is eye swelling, right? So this is a, a symptom which we can see in this present situation right now who is uh, completely recovered by this COVID-19 virus. And another common symptom is difficulty breathing. And this is the one of the most dangerous symptoms, which is coughing up by the blood. So what do you mean by this coughing up the blood? Coughing up the blood in the sense, if the person, if that person who is infected with this mucormycosis, if he is not treated properly, if he is not well treated, then he will cough the blood. So this is one of the most dangerous and painful symptoms which you are going to face. Okay. 
So another common symptom is dusky reddish tender patch with a darkening center. So if the so if the treated with, who is not treated with the uh, proper uh, you know proper treatment in the hospitals, then that person will lead to coma. Even though the person is being survived, then there will be no use if he led to the coma, right? And now uh, one of, we are going to discuss with one of the most important situation scenario which is going to happen right now, which is being happened right now. So uh, what is that? It is COVID-19 versus black fungus and why this black fungus is being infected only for the people uh, who is uh, recovered by, the, uh, by this COVID-19 virus. So what is the reason which is present behind that? I'm going to explain you clearly right now. So listen properly from now. Okay. So what is the reason is that if the particular patient with is given with excessive and prolonged use of steroids in order to treat the COVID-19 virus, then that particular person is being infected with the virus. I mean, this, this is called as uh, mucormycosis, which is commonly called as black fungus, right? So why the steroids should be given to this COVID-19 patient? Like, uh, if he is in the critical stages, if he is in the critical stage, then only the steroids will be given to the COVID-19 patient in order to treat him. But if the steroids will be given to this COVID-19 patient, then it leads to the disease called as mucormycosis, which is commonly called as black fungus. So one of the most important uh, thing which, which doctors will uh, do is that the steroids will be given only for the patient whose oxygen levels are completely low, right? So what are the basic oxygen levels which should be present in the person uh, in order to get survived? Like if the oxygen level is between 95 to 100, then we can assume that the patient oxygen level is good. If the oxygen level is 90, assume that the, then we can assume that the oxygen level in that uh, person, in that human is normal. If the oxygen level is between 94 to 90, which means like 90, 91, 92, 93, then we can assume that the oxygen level in that particular patient is low. And if the oxygen level is below 90, then we can assume that the patient or that particular human oxygen levels is completely low. So if the oxygen level is below 19, then only the steroids will be injected to the patient. Okay. So if that oxygen level is even though low or normal or good, then this steroid should not at all be given to that particular patient. So what will happen if the steroids will be injected into the particular patient who is infected with this mucormycosis. Let us see that. If the patient is injected with the steroids, then we can see both benefits as well as the disadvantages also. So one of the benefit is nothing but uh, where there will, it will, there will be decrease in the inflammation in your lungs and the patient will be completely recovered by the COVID-19 virus. It is benefit. But if you keep this benefit aside, there will be disadvantages also. Like there will be increase in blood sugar levels and there will be decrease in natural immunity. So what will happen if there is increase in blood sugar levels in your blood? It leads to uncontrolled diabetes. Not only that, your blood will become completely acidic in nature. Why? Because sugar levels in your blood will be going on increasing. So that blood will become completely acidic in nature. So once the completely acid become completely acidic in nature, then what will happen? Then fertile environment will be provided to that fungi in order to get survived. So once you're, once you're going to provide that fertile environment, to make that fungi to get survive, then what will happen? That fungi will happily get spreaded in your body. So, in order to prevent that, steroids should not be injected into that COVID-19 patient. If you keep this disadvantage as added, and another, another disadvantage is also present, as you can see here, decrease in the natural immunity. So, what do you mean by this natural immunity? So, I am going to explain this natural immunity clearly. So, before entering into this topic, I wanted to say you one thing. So, listen properly. In our world, in this present world, we have three type of women. So one type of woman is that she can produce breast milk to her baby. And that breast milk which is going to be provided by the first woman will have three type of antibodies, which are IgA antibody, IgM antibody and IgG antibodies. So these are the three antibodies which will be provided by that woman, first woman uh, in, uh, from which mother's breast milk to her baby, right? So this is the first capacity of the woman. Now coming to the second woman, she cannot produce any type of breast milk from her breast in order to feed her baby, right? So once you're going to consult your doctor itself, you can, uh, you know, he or she will say for you that you cannot uh, produce any breast milk because you're, you do, you doesn't have any capacity to produce it. Now coming to the third scenario, third woman, 
she can produce the breast milk but the breast milk will not have any antibodies like as if you can see here IgA, IgM, IgG antibodies. So these three type of antibodies cannot be produced by that uh, woman even though she can uh, produce the breast milk then there will be no use of it if you are going to feed it to your baby. So these are the three kind of women which you can see in this present world. So this natural immunity can be attained by the baby only if he is feeded with the pure and good healthy breast milk which will be provided by his or her mother. Okay. So make sure we need to make sure that our breast milk will be having these kind of antibodies. So once these kind of antibodies or immunoglobulins, I mean this IgA, IgM, IgG. So Ig in the sense immunoglobulin immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin M, immunoglobulin G. So these are the three type of immunoglobulins or antibodies which will be generated from the breast milk of mother once it gets feeded into your baby. So once you're going to feed, feed your baby with this uh, mother's breast milk, then natural immunity will get acquired in the beginning stages of his birth itself. Right? So this is what the natural immunity. So if, you're going, if uh, there is a decrease in the natural immunity itself, there will be no purpose of living right because natural immunity itself is going to be decreased because of injecting the steroids then what will happen then uh, the immune power I mean the immunity of the particular person will get completely decreased right then he can be infected he can be exposed to this disease called as mucormycosis which is commonly called as black fungus right so this is how a COVID-19 patient is being infected with this. This is called as black fungus. And one more important point I wanted to say you regarding this black fungus is that this black fungus can be seen only in the patients who are recovered with this COVID-19. Okay. Who are recovered with this COVID-19 or who is in the stage of ending stage of recovering of this COVID-19. Then we can see the initial stages of this mucormycrosis. Okay. So this is one of the most important point I wanted to say you. Okay. So this is about uh, mucormycosis and this is the information which I have collected regarding this mucormycosis. And if you like my explanation and if you like my presentation, you can like this video, you can subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. And if you want this presentation, check out the link which is provided in the description box. I'm going to give you this PPT. Let me catch you people back with the next video. So until then, you people stay home, stay safe. Thank you.